Well hello there, welcome back to Wet Lines. It's 2020 and we're on the bank. I'm down here today for a, I'm not sure how many hours. Don't know, day and a half. Depends how it goes tomorrow, how the weather is. But I'm down at Cackle Hill. Let's call it a 24 hour, but we'll see. I'm overnighting till tomorrow afternoon basically. So yeah, it's my first session out in, tw in uh, 2020. I'm on my own today, just me, down at Cackle Hill on Speci 1. Alright, I'll give you a quick little spin around, see where we'll show you where I'm at. So I've got one rod just out here on the edge of this island with essentially a version of kind of a Ronnie rig. Basically it's got a pop-up with a little fake corn on top of it, a little pink fake corn and a white pop-up. Pop-up I've gone for on this on that other rig is this. This is the Hold on, where's the lighting on this? We have got no light, there we go. It's the Atlantic Bates Chocolate. Well, this is terrible focus, what's going on here? There we go, there we go. We focus, we got there. It's the Atlantic Bates Chocolate Orange 12 mil. So the last one is over yonder. And on my rod, my other rod is, where am I, there's some weeds, reeds over there on the edge of the bank. It's kind of roughly there, about, I don't even know, two, three foot off from the, the reeds. And again, on that one we've gone for, get that focus locked in again, there we go. We've got some Atlantic baits pop up. Sweet nut. One loves a sweet nut, that's 14 mil. It's kind of like a dumbbell. Dumbbell shaped one. So they're the baits I've gone for. I have to say, I've only been fishing probably about an hour so far. It takes me a month of Sundays to get set up. But I come fishing to relax, I don't come to run around and rush through things. Alright, people, still no fish. Been about four hours since I've started casting them out. So basically, I'll try to some. Alright, so basically, the rod that's over here, I'll cast that. I've read a wow, oh, I can't even speak. I've reeled that bag in, put some new fresh bait on it, but I've also put a solid bag on there. Now, this might not be your stereotypical solid bag material, but I've gone for this. That's what we've gone for, a little mixture of. Yeah, we got some. Is this going to focus again or what? We got for some of this. We got some bloodworm pellets. Because fish all love pellets. All right, let me show you exactly what all this is. The bag has since been used for rubbish, but there you go. We got some bloodworm fish meal feed pellets. That is the little pellets you're seeing in there. And in a chopped up, smashed up, munched about in there, we've got some stupid blood one up. I tell you what, this focus is having an absolute mess. Absolute shambles. 16 mil. Sticky blood one. Yeah, smash some of that up, put that in there. And top it all off, get it all nice and moist. Whack some of that in there. Some of the CC more live system bait booster, so you know, we're giving things a go. So you know we are trying things. Did see another fish over where I where I am. So hopefully, you know, he's gonna feel pecked a bit later if not. It's just a tease to be honest with you. But see that's the latest update. Those of you that have not been to cackle fisheries, I'm not going to walk around too far in the lake because I don't leave my rods, but we'll have a little look just around this end of the, the lake for you and give you a better idea of what's going on. 
with my spurs, I think it's a given. New bivy, by the way. Yeah, it's the TF G Airflow Mark II. Just before I leave, now this is literally this. Yeah, this is just what do we want? What do you want to call it? Pipe, pole, whatever, and this one. Air, full of air. All you've got to do is pump it up about 15 pumps in each one, and the bivvy's up. Right, apologies for the audio there. Wind was causing me absolute havoc. But yeah, what I'm saying here basically is this end of the lake, I might be wrong, but I think was slightly extended. And I think there's quite a bit of gravelly bars or gravelly sections to be found in this end of the lake. And there's two channels that you can see go around the island up there. So those two channels around the islands go up to the other end of the lake. And they both meet up the other side of that island. Well, there's two islands there. And then they filter through one narrow area, which I believe is known as Catfish Alley. So if you're keen at catching catfish, that section up there's It'll be absolutely ideal for you there. We've we fished up there before and you get a lot of catfish action up there. And if you are looking to catch the catfish, in this lake alone there are catfish well up to a hundred pounds to be found in this lake, so no shortage of big cats. And as you can see here, this is the right hand side of the islands where one of the channels goes down and that's where Catfish Alley is. Basically that goes straight down there and then bends round to the left where you've got another open area of lake, much like this one but more squared off. Up around there there's two swims that fish basically that end section on their own so if you're coming down here with one friend, we fished there before, that's an ideal little spot to get because it's swims eight and nine I believe and you've just got the whole end section of lake to yourselves. So that's your first island. Into the gap. I believe this used to be one big island. I'm not 100%. But I think it was one island, and they've separated it into two. So between my swim and where I'm walking now, there's not actually another swim for quite a while. We've got to walk up through this little passageway here to get to the next swim. So, plus I may add. Where I was fishing is not actually a swim. Uh, I spoke to the, the bailiff on the day and basically it was the best option for me because in the other swims around that end where I was was far too f boggy and puddly so that was the best option to, to go on. I want to catch some catfish to a decent size is a good place to go. And this is the next swim. Yes. Hill behind you, private. It's obviously, if you get taken by a big fish and get around that island, you've got problems. So tight clutches really on this lake because there's a lot of snags. A lot of snags up in these uh, edges. And we've experienced it before. I think actually there's a video on the channel. Fishing here. This is the next swim. And this is where Tony was in said video. To which he got snagged up a lot under these trees. Here. Again, there's one island. 
island in the way. I believe the other side of that island is actually the deepest part of this lake. swim this one. This is where Tony caught his 50 pound catfish from this one. Nice open bit of water. Then it finishes round here to the left. Just there and the swim itself is just there which is quite a nice little private one. And that's where it ends so this is Specy 1 at Cackle Hill and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Right then guys, it's uh... I don't even know what it is. It's the next morning. I think it's about 8 o'clock. No fish over the night. About half 7, my alarm went off. Thought, oh, fish. Nah. Didn't have it. So this morning, I'm going to consider some new tactic. So I'm going to, going to get the deeper pro out, the deeper. Have a lot of mooch about, see where the fish are at. I know some of you out there watching this, thinking, oh, the deeper's a bit of a cheat. It is, but when you're as you know ineffective as a fisherman as I am, you know, I got to do what I can do. So I'm going to get that out, have a little look about, see if I can find any fish, see if the fish are in the middle, bottom, top. I've seen one fish crash out over in the corner there, so probably start over there. And then we'll see what we, see what we get from that, so, you know, if they're in the middle, I'll try some zig rigs. If they're at the bottom, well, stay as I am, different baits, but just obviously put it where they are. So yeah, that's all. I'll get back to you in a minute when I find out. Right, I'm just going to get the deeper pro out there. If any of you know what the deeper pro is, I've done a little video roughly showing you, telling you about it. Basically, it tells you what the, what's going on in the water, how deep, the temperature, what's on the surface of the, on the bottom of the water. Slowly wind that in now. Let's get it going. So you can see on here, ignore that, that's where I did it before. This is where we're at in minutes at the minute. 1.7 meters, and it's 10 degrees. Flat, a little bit of a little bit of weed action. So I'll move it around, see what we can find. Sitting in weeds and reeds, and just chilling. This is a uh, David Pro's ideal, really, for uh, if you're just doing a day session. You ain't got time to get your marker rod out and your lead and traipse around trying to find the floor, find the spots. Just chuck this out. I'm not really finding anything of any interest. It's all just flat, about 1.8 metres. Range in between 9 and 10 degrees. So. so the added beauty of the deeper pro is, now I might not find any fish on this occasion, I might find nothing of any interest. But, what it does do for you, it maps out your swim. So I mean, it's not really clear at the minute because I haven't got the maps actually, the, you know, geographical 3D Google map type thing going on. But it keeps it all there. 
So I've asked to come back here fishing and I found a sweet spot on my deeper. All I've got to do is look on here and say, ah, bingo. Good spots over there, good spots over there, the deep points there. Even if you don't find any fish now, it records all the history of the map. So eventually you could probably map out the whole lake if you was down here enough. Alright, well, as you can see, I'm in the car, world's smallest car for fishing, not ideal one bit. Session's come to an end, did about 24 hours in the end, a little bit just over. And uh, no success. But it's all a learning curve, this is the earliest I've ever been fishing in, in the year, it's January. I think the earliest previous I've ever been fishing was about March, so it's all a learning curve for me trying to work out what needs to be done in these colder temperatures. You know, even the best anglers could not catch in January. It's a lot of its luck. So yeah, no success on this trip unfortunately, but there's always next time. Actually, come back here or somewhere else in a couple of weeks. I should have Tony with me then, so double the chances of any potential fish. So yeah, well I hope you enjoyed this video, I know there's no fish, apologies for that, but you know, if anything I've given you a little, I've given you a little view of what Specie 1 is on Cackle Hill, hopefully that was useful for you in some way, in case you fancy coming down here, and if you do fancy coming down here, I think it was what, so I did 24 hours, that was £25, 48 hours obviously is 50 quid. that's for two rods, it's a venue I very much recommend to be fair, let's say Specy 1's in front of me, that's where I just was in the car park now, Specy 2's just up the hill to the left there so short distance from me the lakes there is other, another little lake opposite that one which is just a little match lake so you've got three options you know the top lake Specy 2 is meant to be apparently the easier lake and Specy 1's meant to have the bigger fish I tend to agree with that so far, I have had a lot more success on Specy 2 personally than on Specy 1 so there you go so the fancy trip down this is Cackle Hill in Biddenden give it a go All right, and also in terms of uh, utilities and things to use here you've got a, got a nice calf here there's a cracking breakfast in there cracking sandwiches Burgers, you know the lot. And this side over here is a lovely tackle shop. Tackle, bait, they got it all in there. And then just over there, you've got your toilet, men's, women's, and a nice shower room in there. So if you're here for a long stay, you can keep clean, lovely jumbly. So yeah, you've got a calf, you've got a tackle shop, yonder. I'll just show you around the corner, because this lead. a lot of people like to know they're safe and secure on these venues. These gates right here in front of me, they're automatic gates, ideal. So in the summertime or the majority of the year, 7am, you queue up outside, 7am comes, bing, gates open automatically, you've not got to wait for anyone to turn up. If there's someone already here, you pop into the shop and pay. If there's not, park up, get straight around your swim, sort yourself out. The bailiff will come around and sort you out. And then at 7pm, again, the gates shut automatically. So you're nice and safe and secure in here. No randoms are going to come in here and sort you out. So yeah, that's Cackle Hill in a nutshell, really. Lovely. Hello, hi there. Welcome back to White Lines. We're here in the quagmire that is Wylands. It's Tony. 
Hi time, say hello to the people time. Oh, hi. Right Here we are, back at Wyland's. Just chucking out a couple of, couple of spots on my spots. You know? Yeah. So yeah, we're here for uh, an unknown amount of hours. It's technically a 48 hour, but it won't be. Probably, what's it, 36? About 36 hours. Three o'clock, stop packing up tomorrow at three o'clock. Before it gets dark-ish. Here comes the bailiff. Bailiff's on route. Squad. Here comes time, big squad action. Bosh. Nice. Happy with that. So yeah, we're on, where are we on here? We're on Spassy 2. We was going to go middle. But mm -hmm. it looked like we'll break our necks getting our gear onto it. Yeah, it was a little bit uneven. Spassy 2, wireless. So we got wind action, so the audio goes peak tongue, apologies. A little bit crisp breezy. Hold on. Time's going for a spot. Nice. So that's always, always, always clip it up. Always clip it up. <laughs> safety first. Yeah, safety first. There you go. Time for Cider of the Sesh. Cider of the Sesh. We have premium cider, Copperberg Black. Bosh. Copperberg Black. Four point. Bit of action over there. Keep calm. Keep calm. Anyway, yeah. Copperberg Black. Black currant and blackberry. Yeah. I see the black theme now. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's like their own little version of um, Strongbow. Dark fruits. Yeah. They're all getting involved. Four percent. I'll be honest. There's not a lot of detail on this. There's this no. quite a bland can, so we're gonna just crack on with it. Yeah. Please drink responsibly. It says on there, mate. So don't drink before you drive, basically. Let's crack on. <laughs> yeah. Let's crack her open. There's, there's nothing much to do about this. It's ah. Yeah, it's just clean. So we're looking at blackcurrant and blackberry. Cheers. 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 I'll tell you what that tastes of. You know what it tastes of? What? Strong blow. <laughs> Dark fruits. <laughs> I'll be honest. It's not too sweet, is it? It's not too sweet. No, it's, uh, it don't feel like you're just drinking sugar. No, yeah. Not, not, not normal Copperberg cider. That's quite clean. That's alright. I prefer that than dark fruits. Do you reckon? Strong bar, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. There you go, nice. Uh, I think I've got this got these from Tesco's, I think it was like five fifty for a box of four. Well there you go. Five fifty. Yeah, I think it was about five fifty. And how many how many um milliliters are these? 440. 440 millilitres. Oh, oh, and they come in. He's all over. Tidy. And they come in. Box like that. Guess what? It's black. And then it also looks just like the can. Well, there you go. That's it then, really. That's it, yeah. So that's the side of the sash for today. Get yourself some. Or not. Up to you. <laughs> And if there's any ciders you want to suggest that we try, keep it random though. A vague, you know, rogue one. Yeah. Don't tell me to do a strong bow. I've had strong bow. Yeah. You know an odd little fancy one. Stick it in the comments, and we'll get it on one of the one of our sessions. See ya. Cheers. Tidy. Nice. That's cider of the sesh. Cider of the sesh. So this is my swim on this session. So at the minute, my one, my first rig is just on the tip of this, tip of that little island there. And my swim goes right on the left. I'm the only one fishing this end of the swim, which is I do. Around to here. Bailiff highly suggested I, where are we? I can't really see it, but there's a big tree in this corner. And my rig's just up along the island to the left of it. 
did already have one bite on that spot. I literally cast it out, walked around there to throw some a few pellets down there, and as I was there, Tony thankfully stood by my rods just in case, and it absolutely ripped off. So Tony struck into it, but apparently there's some. Uh, some dead or not fully grown, you know, it's the time of year with lily pads and yeah, I think it went in there and long story short we lost that fish. But at least it's good signs that there are fish here, they're fish feeding, they're moving about. So fingers crossed for a fish today. If not, let's go and see Tony. Yes, yes. Could we have fish numero uno? What we saying, Tone? Talk me through what, what what was on this one. This was the um, D rig. Yep. Um, cell wafter, soaked in goo. She's not a giant, Tone. but she's a fish. She's a fish mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all about not blanking. I mean, I have for about three years now, but <laughs> we won't worry about that. Uh, baby. Yeah, but Tone. It's, uh, a baby could lead to the big ones following. Could do. What's time? But. Uh, Half four. Ooh. So the old app, as per, says five o'clock onwards. So maybe this one's getting ahead of the big ones to get in. Yeah. Obviously she's a piddler, but this time of year you can't be picky. <laughs> February the first. Carp in the net. Yeah. Happy days. Happy days. Oh, right, town. Best fish of the year, probably. It's the first fish of the year. It's the first fish. Of so the year. it is the best fish of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Onwards and upwards. Yeah, that's it. Tidy. Nice. Here we go. Are Tidy. you ready for this whale? Yeah. First carp this of the year. Counts. First carp of the year. Nice little comment. Ready? Oh, Bosh. you were right carrying that. <laughs> yeah. got She's bit. got some girth to her. It's got some weight behind yeah. it. I would say three pound, maybe. I don't know, but. Hey, here she is. She's a few, future 40. She, <laughs> she's going to be a big girl. Lovely stuff. Well done, Tom. Nice. See in a few years, fish. Yeah. Better Love put it. her back. She's a chilly fish. <laughs> yeah. See this here, look. The steps to the lake. Is like, don't stack it. Please stack it. <laughs> Off your pop, little one. Go and tell your mates to come back. Your big mates. Your big mates. There we go. Well done, Tom. Cheers, mate. 2020 off and running. It is. Hopefully I'll join you before 2021. <laughs> Can't guarantee that. But that's all for me now. Time to go home. Time to get ready for work tomorrow. That's wonderful. You know, it's just nice that we have escapism in it from your normal life. Even if you don't catch. Just a bit of time to relax, detox your brain. And if you do like this video, not that there was much fish, but again, apologies. But we've got plenty of other good videos, plenty of fish. So if you don't mind subscribing, clicking the like bell if you liked it. If you didn't like it, click the dislike button. I'm not gonna, you know, feedback's feedback in the future if I don't catch fish. Won't make a vlog if it's that disliked. But you know, we don't always catch fish in every session. Everyone's not perfect. I'm certainly not. I can barely catch a fish in the best of times. So, yeah, so subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Click the little, no click the little bell, get notifications. We do catch fish on wet lines, just not so much with me. So, yeah.